Hello guys, we're going to take a little time here to have a discussion about uh, review material, a similarity of things that we would have talked about before the break. Uh, all the videos that I'm putting together will be out on YouTube. Uh, there's also the links that you're going to find on Google Classroom. So I guess that makes me a YouTuber now. Uh, going to probably make a million on YouTube videos before I'm done with all this. At this point in time, I'm only about a million dollars short of that goal, but uh, we're well on our way. Anyway, uh, guys, uh, first thing, when you open up a Google Slide uh, document in Google Classroom, and I'm wanting you to turn that in as a worksheet, this is what you're going to see probably to start with. So you're probably going to go to your View menu and go ahead and zoom in on this thing so you can see a little bit better. Uh, zoom up to 100%. And then basically all I have here are text boxes for each of the problems where you just simply would click on the text box and you'd type your answer in. We're going to come back to that here after we are done talking about our review of the similarity material. When you're doing a worksheet, you're going to probably do your scratch work on a piece of paper separate, uh, something like this potentially. I just have the worksheet posted here. And uh, let's go ahead and get started. <clears throat> First one says to find the geometric mean between 10 and 50. If you remember back when we talked about a geometric mean, a geometric mean is a proportion where the means repeat. So I've got A over B is equal to B over C. If you remember, A and C were my extremes. The B value or the number that repeats is the means. So B is a geometric mean because it's the same number twice in the position of the means. So to find the geometric mean between 10 and 50, we would write the proportion where I, I'm finding the geometric mean. So my unknown value would be the, the B value from that or the means. And I've got 50 and 10 as my extremes. And then the big boy, big girl terms for this tells me to take the product of the means, which is going to be x squared. And you're going to set that equal to the product of the extremes, which is 10 times 50, so 500. To solve this, we're going to take the square root on both sides. And as I take the square root, x ends up equaling 10 radical 5. On your next problem, uh, maybe at this point, maybe you want to pause the video, and I would suggest even pausing throughout. Uh, take a moment and try these on your own, and then you can come back, watch the video, see if you're getting them, and the ones that you don't, then you're going to get a nice little review with. Anyway, 15 is a geometric mean between 5 and what other number? Well, this is suggesting that 15 is the geometric mean, so this guy, 15, is going to repeat as the means. And it's the geometric mean between 5 and some other number we don't know. So we're going to put x here. When we take the product of the means and extremes, I'm going to have the equation of 5x is equal to 225. We're going to solve this by dividing each side by 5. And your x value ends up equaling 45. For my next one here, uh, they give me this equation, and they want me to find the value of x over y. If you remember that the, uh, uh, the colon here is basically the same as the division bar, so this is just a ratio of x over y. And to get x over y from this equation, I need to get, well, exactly that, x on top and y on the bottom. So I'm going to divide by y here, giving me x over y. We do it to one side. We're going to go ahead and do it to the other side of our equation and the y's would cancel out on this side. But then I don't want 2x over y, so all right, we, we divide each side by 2. Divide 2 there, divide 2 here as well. When you do that, the 2's cancel, and x over y is equal to 7 over 2. So that would be your final answer here. And I could write it with the division bar. I can also write it here with the colon. On the next one, number 4, they give you this proportion of m over n equals x over y. And in the end, they want us to have it, they want to know what m over x would equal. So whenever you have a proportion, a good way to start is take the product of the means, set it equal to the product of the extremes. Well, the means would be the n times the x. So let's go ahead and do that. nx is equal to the product of the extremes there, which would be m times y. 
Well, it wants m over x in my answer here at the end. Uh, so to get that, I would go ahead and divide by x because that gives me my m over x. And if I do it to one and I do it to the other side, these guys cancel, so we're good there. But I don't want my, and remember that this is multiplication with two variables together. So we're going to divide by y to get rid of that here. And if I divide y there, we do it over here as well. So in the end, m over x is equal to n over y. So we could fill in here our final answer of n over y. In our next section of questions, uh, the directions here are telling me that these triangles are similar. ABC is similar to DEF. What is the ratio of the corresponding sides? Uh, we've also talked about that as a scale factor. Uh, ratio of similarity, those three ideas are all pretty much uh, interchangeable, same idea. So if I want the ratio of the sides, well, I find two corresponding sides, like a, the side length of AB is 9, and AB in my similarity statement corresponds to DE, so AB over DE is 9 over 21, giving me my ratio of my sides. Now, you always want to reduce, so when I do that, 9 uh, and 21 reduce down to 3 over 7. Try that again. So the ratio of the sides is, is 3 over 7. Uh, then the next <clears throat> question, 6, is what's the ratio of the corresponding altitudes? Well, we had a theorem that talked about that the ratio of the corresponding sides in similar triangles is equal to the ratio of the corresponding altitude. So this is just simply the same answer of 3 over 7. And not only are the ratio of the sides and the altitudes going to be the same, but the ratio of the perimeters is also the same. But we got to hold on here a second because this is a specific question. It wants the ratio of the perimeters, because the Greek letter rho means perimeters, the ratio of the perimeters of DEF to ABC. So this is a specific order uh, of triangle DEF compared to ABC. And DEF is my larger triangle. So it would actually be 21 over 9, or a reduced ratio of 7 over 3. And when I found the ratio of the sides up here, I could have written 7 over 3. Same thing with the altitude, because these questions were not asking for a specific order. Typically when I do it, I'll, I'll typically go small over big, but there's nothing saying you need to do that. Uh, and then finally, number 8, the question here is, what is uh, the ratio of my areas? One, uh, the, the, the Greek letter alpha is referring to area, and uh, so it wants me to compare the area of triangle DEF to the area of ABC. And the theorem we had with this talked about taking your ratio of your sides, which would be 7 over 3 when I compare DEF to ABC, and we square that. So the ratio of my areas ends up being 49 over... 9. Now, as I look at these ratios that I have, I, I think of this as my toolbox for similarity. These are ratios that I can use to start a proportion to find each of these given things. So if I were asked to find a side length, I would reach into my toolbox and I would pull out my ratio of sides, which would be 3 sevenths, and that's how I'd start my proportion. Uh, likewise, if I was asked to find a perimeter, well, here in the toolbox, here's the ratio of perimeters. So I'd use the 7 over 3 to start that, or if I'm asked to find an area, I would pull out the 49 over 9. Uh, that ratio would start a proportion to find an area that I don't know. <clears throat> so, Keeping in mind, it's always important to use the right tool for the job. Uh, if you're pounding in a nail, we're not going to use the duct tape. So we got to make sure we use the right tool uh, for the job in geometry as well. So when I look at number 9 here, they want to find H. Well, H in this diagram is the altitude of this triangle. Well, if I'm finding an altitude, I use the ratio of the altitudes. And the ratio of the altitudes here is 3 over 7. So a little chicken scratch to the side here. We're going to go ahead and set up my proportion. Well, there's the ratio of 3 to 7. That compares the small to the large triangle. And now I want the altitude of this. So the altitude of the large triangle, I don't know. We're calling that H. And the altitude of the big tri or the small triangle is 7.2. So as I do 
the uh, product of the means and extremes here. I get my equation of 3x is equal to, or 3h I guess it is, is equal to uh, 7 times 7.2, it's going to be close to 49, that's going to be 50.4. When you divide each side by 3, the h value uh, ends up being 16.8. All right, so here we go. Got that answer of 16.8. Continuing on. The next question is asking, what's the perimeter of triangle ABC? Well, I'm asked to find the perimeter. If I want a perimeter, I should use the ratio of the perimeters, which is right here, the 7 over 3. So over here to the side, I've got my ratio of 7 over 3. This is comparing DEF to ABC, or the big to the small triangle. We're talking about perimeters. I don't know the perimeter of the small one, that's what it's asking. But I do know the perimeter here of the small one is, or the large one, excuse me, is 84. So the large over the small, DEF over ABC is 84 over my unknown here. And I'm just going to go ahead and call it X this time. So 7X, when I do the product of the means, equals the product of the extremes. So the means multiplied, 84 times 3 is going to give me 252. When you divide each side by 7, the x value, and the x value in this case represents the perimeter of ABC, ends up equaling 36. So, this answer here, 36 for the perimeter of ABC. Kind of interesting, I don't know only but one side length here, but I know the perimeter of all the sides added together. Uh, so that's kind of a, a neat thing with that ratio and how that works. Uh, finally, number 11 here, it's asking for the area of DEF. Well, DEF um, is the large triangle, and by finding the area, we're going to use the ratio of the areas. So I'm going to start with this 49 over 9. And that's equal to, well, the area of the large triangle, I don't know. That's what it's asking for. So the area of the large on top is my x or unknown. The area of the small one, well, we know that here is 54. So uh, product of the means equals the product of the extremes yet one more time. 9x is equal to 49 times 54 is 2,646. When we divide by 9, the x value here ends up equaling 294. So the area of DEF is 294. All right, uh, continuing on, the last examples we have here, 13 and, or 12 and 13, uh, is dealing with the diagram here with this line that is parallel to this third side intersecting the other two. This guy has a name. We call this a side splitter. We had the theorem with the side splitter that we dealt with. Um, and the side splitter theorem was, was going to be helpful in this diagram. As also, the other thing to consider with those parallel lines, we know that this angle here equals that one there. And since the lines are parallel, this guy here is equal to this angle down here at the bottom. And we know that because... <clears throat> Uh, parallel lines give equal corresponding angles. And with that, I've got two angles of the small triangle equal to two angles of my large triangle. And so they've got to be similar by angle angle or AA. So not only do side splitter come into play, but also these similar triangles could also come into play in this particular diagram. First question here is asking me to find X. Well, to find X, this is a, a segment, okay, or a, a, a piece of this side that it was split into. So the side splitter is, is what we're going to use. And in this proportion, I'm going to set it up with 8 over 2. The segments of this side, okay, it was split into those, equal to the segments of the other side, which would be 7 over x. So when we solve this, we have 8x is equal to 14. And when we solve, x ends up equaling 
1.75. So the x value 1.75 and onward to finding y. Well, the side splitter deals with these two sides that are being split. Well, this side's being split and that side's being split by the side splitter. Y has nothing to do with the side splitter theorem. The only thing that we could use here is the idea that these two triangles are similar. So when I set up a uh, proportion to, to solve that, because we know that the similar triangles have corresponding sides that are proportional, I need a side of the small compared to a side of the large, which might look like 11 over y when I look at the length that I need here of y. And then for the other sides of the triangle, I need numbers. Over here, not so helpful having the x there, but here I have numbers over here, which is really helpful. So I'm comparing the small triangle's length of 8 to the large triangle's side length of, and people are going to make a mistake and put a 2 here, which is wildly wrong. The side length here actually from top to bottom is a total of 10. So I've got 8 over 10 is equal to 11 over y. Product of the means is 8y. Product of the extremes is 110. When I divide this, my y value ends up equaling 13.75. So uh, that's a quick review of things that we've talked here with similarity. I'm hoping that's helpful for you. Uh, we're going to now talk about quickly how to put this into your Google slide and especially answers like our, our first one up here where we end up getting that answer of, of 10 radical 5. So here we go. Let's give that a go. <clears throat> All right, so here we are in that first answer blank and we want to type in the answer of 10 radical 5. So here we go 10 and then the square root symbol is not available. So to do this, we're going to go to the insert menu and insert a special character. Um, all right, we're going to do a search for that special character and we want a square root so we can type in square root. And you can do this for a lot of math symbols in, in Google Slides or Docs. So I found the square root symbol, there it is. As soon as I click on it, it went ahead and put it right into my document. So I've got 10 radical 5 is my answer. So we're good on that one. And then other ones, we just go ahead and, and key our answers in. The answer we had found here for number two was 45. So putting your answers into this is going to be pretty easy. Number three was 7 over 2. It's a ratio. You could do 7 colon 2. Okay, that represents a ratio. We could also go uh, 7 divided by 2. So either of those would be acceptable. I'm not going to fill this entire document out, but just to give you an idea. And the main thing I want to talk about was how to get that square root symbol in. Um, at this point, guys, I think we're, we're a wrap on this video. Hope this is helpful. Uh, join the online chat sessions if you've got questions. We'd be glad to work with you on those things, and we will talk to you another time.